I want to kind of look at a little different way of studying the Bible today, and I actually titled it Studying the Books of the Bible. Uh, on Wednesdays, we've been uh, looking at uh, some requirements for effective Bible study. Last thing we looked at is some rules for Bible interpretation, and now I want to look at studying the books of the Bible. And I think it's so important that we study the books of the Bible, amen? It's important that we understand the books of the Bible. And uh, as I was, I didn't go to a Bible school, but as I was taught homiletics and doctrine by Pastor Bill Wohl, I had to go through these studies uh, somewhat. And, and, uh, and right now that I'm going through some of what I had to learn back then as well. I take some from there. And it's interesting how many things you forget over the years if you don't study it later on. And uh, just uh, as I was coming back and looking over the studies I did back then to prepare for this, you know, I go, wow, um, Pastor Wall actually had a lot of things for me at that time uh, that I could grow spiritually. And I think that's good for all of us. Amen? That's good for all of us. So studying the books of the Bible. The study of individual books of the Bible is very important, I believe. It's very important. Now, how many here actually do that? And I'm not talking about reading. I'm talking about studying, because there's a big difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Amen? There's a big difference. We can read through the Bible once a year, but then we can choose a book and study this book. And that's what I want to look at today, how we can do this and benefit from it. How we can do this and benefit from it. So it is very important that we study the individual books of the Bible. There are many great benefits from this method of study. And I want to look at a couple of those today. First, studying individual books of the Bible helps us understand the Bible as a whole. So I'll say that again. Studying individual books of the Bible helps us to understand the Bible as a whole. I would assume that in this church here in Open Bible Baptist, a lot of people have been saved a lot longer than me, a lot longer, and some not as long. But I would assume that everybody knows how many books there are in the Bible. Amen? Everybody watching online, everybody that's here today, would know how many books there are in the Bible. Well, amen. Brother, uh, Brother Frank here was saying, right, and, and do you know how many books are in the Old Testament and how many are in the New Testament as well? So that's important as well. And, and I remember as when I got saved, you know, a pastor said, this is something very important for you to learn. You got to know your Bible. How many books are in the Bible, first of all? How many books the Old Testament has? And then how many books the New Testament has? And then he said, the Bible is a library of 66 books. Amen? Of 66 books. And it is, and it is impossible to understand the Bible as a whole until we understand individual books. So yes, it is important that we do study them individually. And yes, there is 66 books in the Bible. It's a library of 66 books. There's 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. Amen? So 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. I don't have that here. I just figured I'd put that out so everybody knows that. Uh, I've said before here, I have different Bibles. I believe the King James Version is the preserved Word of God in the English language. That's what I use to preach, to teach, and to study. But I have different Bibles to compare because there are so many different Bibles out there and people use those and claim those are better or just as good as the King James. Having said that, I also have a Catholic Bible. I have the old Catholic Bible and I have the New Catholic Bible. Why? Because in Mexico, about 99% of the people are Roman Catholic. So you want to know what their Bible teaches. And so you compare. 
And having said that, I could lead the people to Christ with their own Bible, but I wouldn't use that Bible to preach. Amen? I would not use it. In the, English, in the Spanish language, I prefer the 1602 in the Spanish language. For me, that's the best Bible. It's basically the same as the King James. Lots of people use in the Spanish language the 1960. It's a good Bible as well. There's a couple of places where I believe it has been translated from Westcott and Hort. That's something I've studied a bit and I wouldn't agree with. I believe in the Septus text. Amen? So, but I don't know why I'm getting into all of this, but it's part of study. Amen? It's part of study. So, yes, 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. And in the Catholic Bible, what I want to get at here, they have more books than 66. Now, they put quite a few more, more books, and I know what they are called in Spanish, and I don't have this here, but it just came to mind. In Spanish, I know what they're called. In English, I'm not sure how you would say that. In Spanish, you would call it apocryphos. Those are the books that were written in the 400 silent years. Has anybody here heard of the 400 silent years? I think you would have. Which are the 400 silent years? Between Malachi and Matthew. Amen? Between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Why silent years? There was no prophet of God. Okay? So, a lot of books were written. So, a lot of history. What went on in those 400 years? So, it's good history, but it's not the inspired word of God. So, it shouldn't be in the Bible. Okay? And they do have it in the Bible. So, we believe in a Bible with six, with, uh, with, which has a library of 66 books. Okay? Okay, first, like I said, studying individual books of the Bible helps you understand the whole, uh, the, the, the Bible as a whole. The Bible is a library of 66 books, and it is possible to understand the Bible as a whole, and it, it, it is not possible, sorry, to understand the Bible as a whole until we understand the individual books. Second, studying individual books of the Bible helps us interpret the Bible in context. And I thought on this a couple of Wednesdays ago. We need to let the context rule. Amen? For us to be able to interpret it a little better. But yes, studying individual books of the Bible helps us interpret the Bible in context. Individual verses or passages can only be rightly interpreted in the context of the book in which they are contained. That is important for us to understand. To study a book of the Bible, the student needs to take some steps. And I want to look at a few steps today to be able to study the book of the, well, I'll say it again. To study the book of the Bible, the student needs to take the following steps. First step, get a thorough grasp of the entire message of the book. Now, when we study a Bible, like I said, we don't just read the book. We don't, don't just read it. We study it. We need to get a thorough grasp of the entire message of the book. We need to understand what the message of the book is from front to back. Amen? It's very important. To gain a good grasp of the message of a book, you need to read it more than once. More than once. Repeatedly, I should say. You need to read it repeatedly. I've tried to understand. When I read the Bible through lots of times, I said, why didn't I understand this last year? And probably if I would have when I finished the book, if I would have read it right away, God probably would have given me some more understanding. So yes, we need to right away. But now I didn't get it until a year later. And sometimes maybe you wouldn't. God knows when he gives you understanding that it's the right time, I believe. When he can use it for his glory. Amen? Okay? 
You need to read it repeatedly, but not only read. What else do we need to do? To get a good grasp, to get a good grasp of the message of a book, we need to re repeatedly read it, but what else do we need to do than read? And because it's Bible study, I, I asked that, and I allowed someone to answer if someone wants to. What else do we need to do? We need to concentrate. Amen? We need not just to read it repeatedly, but also concentrate as we read. We need to pray, God, give me understanding. Give me understanding in what you're saying here. Concentrate as we read. We should always have an aim. What is our aim? And we should always aim to understand the main purpose of the book. I think that's so important. What's the, let, let's just take one book. What's the main purpose of Hebrews? Think about that. What's the main purpose? As you read it, what's the main purpose of this book? Or of Matthew, or of any other book, as we read it. What's the main purpose? When you think about Matthew, let's just think about that. What would you think? What's the ma main purpose of Matthew? And then you go from there. But aim to get to know the main purpose of the book that you read and study. The main purpose. It is very important that we do this. But not only the main purpose of the book, but also its main lessons. Its main lessons. What's the main purpose of the book and its main lessons? Because there's more than one lesson. There's a purpose, but there's also lessons in this book. And each book. As I, I started reading Matthew this year, and, and actually I took a commentary this year. Uh, I'm not reading through the whole Bible, and that's the first time I'm doing this since I got saved. I've always read through the Bible every year since I got saved. And this year I figured I want to do it a little different. Now I'm taking commentaries, and I have different commentaries, and they have a little different views, but meaning the same thing. They're actually not contradicting themselves, the commentaries. That's a good thing. So I'm taking different commentaries and what they think about the purpose of the book of Matthew and the, purpose, and, and the lessons, the main lessons of the book of Matthew. So you can learn a lot of things there. So I'm still in Matthew. I'm still not in all the other books. So commentaries, to have a commentary is a good thing. Amen? To have a concordance is a good thing. So all of these are tools we can use to prepare us ourselves so God can use, to pre be prepared of God for God to use us. Let's say it that way. But these are tools God gives us so we can be used of him in the right way. So yes, repeatedly re read and concentrate as you read. Aim to understand the main purpose of the book and its main lessons. Look for key words as you read. Look for key words to understand what the purpose is, the main purpose or the main lessons, or repeated statements. A lot of times a book has repeated statements, sometimes in front, other in the middle, other at the end, but as you read the book, ah, it talked about it back there, and then you understand what God is saying in a better way. So you look at Keywords, repeated statements, or main events, and characters as well. So there are so many things that help us to understand the books. For example, now I'm just going to put one example here. If you read the book of Judges, what would you think about? What's the main purpose for the book of Judges? Just think about that. Well, I believe clearly marked the names of the various judges. The book of Judges tells us about all the judges Israel had. Amen? So yes, you mark the names of the various judges because that is how the book is naturally divided, by the judges. But other books, it's more difficult. Judges is actually one of the 
easier books. Okay, get a thorough grasp of the entire message of the book. Second, make an introduction to the book. Make an introduction to the book. When I was told this, I told Pastor, how do I do that? <laughs> how do I make an introduction to a book? And mind you, I had only been saved for about three months when I started with this. So for me, I had a lot of questions at that time. So make an introduction to a book, to the book that you are studying. An important part of analyzing a book of the Bible is to make an introduction by writing down the answers to the following questions. Who wrote the book? Now let's go to a, any book in the Bible. Who wrote the book? Do we know who wrote the book? All the books of the Bible? If we go to the book of Hebrews, who wrote the book of Hebrews? We don't know. A lot of people, a lot of pastors would say, well, I think Paul wrote it. it sounds like Paul. Others would say, no, I don't think it was Paul. So we, re we really don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews. So we will not always find the answers. That's what I I'm just wanted to say. But we should ask ourselves, the book of John, who wrote the book? John. First John, second John, third John, and Revelation? John. So this, we know who wrote the book. What do I know about the author? Okay, and having said that, about the writer, I should say, because the author of the Bible is God. He used about 40 different writers, amen? But who was the human author? Let's say it that way. Well, if we go again to the book of Hebrews, we don't know. What do I know about the author? What do we know about John? Let's just talk about John here a bit. Or what do we know about Mark, what do we know about Matthew? What do we know about Moses? So, important things. You make an introduction to the book. Who wrote the book? And I think this is, why did I want to go through this? Because I think it's important as believers, as born again believers, that we grow spiritually. And yes, we can come to church and we can listen to the pastor preach. And that should help us. But I think it's so much, we can grow in a stronger way if we ourselves study the Bible and ask God for guidance in that area. If we do this, if we make our own introduction to the book that we are studying, who wrote it? What do I know about the author? What were his circumstances when he wrote? That's the next question. And then we answer that. So we have to dig in deep to see what the circumstances were. We might even have to get into history and see what the circumstances were at that time. So this is a good thing. What does this do? It makes us spiritually grow. Amen? So it's good for us as believers. It's not a bad thing. It's good. So studying the books of the Bible, actually, if we do that as individuals, we will grow. And we will have a stronger conviction that God can do all things. Amen? So very important. So now we've seen three. Who wrote the book? What do I know about the author? What were his circumstances when he wrote? And then answer that. And then who is he writing to? Very important question. Okay, um, let's see. I'm uh, reading the book of Job. Or 1 Kings. So we ask, who is he writing to? Who is he writing to? Now we answer that. We find out, we have to study, and we find, okay, 
He's writing to, okay, to these people. When did he write? When we look at Paul, <laughs> he wrote a lot of his letters, epistles, while he was in jail. Paul was such a busy man, he was on fire for God, and if he wouldn't have been put in jail, I, I don't think we'd have all these books. God knew what he had to do for Paul to write these books. Amen? He did it while he was in jail. And yet, even there, people came and he preached to them all the time. That is being on fire for God. If we as believers could be like that today, what a difference it would make in this world, wouldn't it? So yes, I think the last one I said is, when did he write, right? Okay, I said, what were his circumstances when he wrote? Who is he writing to? And when did he write? Why did he write the book? That's the next question. Why did he write the book? What's the reason behind it? So, and then we find out, why was this book written? What is the one central idea of the book, is the next question. What is the one central idea of the book? And what are the main thoughts of the book, is the last question. All of these were given to me when I had been saved for three months. And he says, now I want you to study a book. You choose the book. And then I want you to give me an introduction to the book. Wow. But you know, that's a good way to grow. Amen? That's a good way to grow. Believe me, my wife back then wasn't saved yet. And she had always said before I was saved, you know, any church you want to go to, let's go as long as you change. And after I was saved and I started digging into the Bible and started studying and starting, uh, she said, I wanted you to change, but not this much. This is too much. Now you have no time but for studying. But you know, it's a good thing. There's nothing more important in this world than studying God's word and telling others about Christ, about salvation. That's still the most important message in this world. There's nothing more important. So if we as individuals study and we grow and can be used of God in this dark world, what a blessing. What a blessing. So yes, make an introduction to the book. The attempt to write your own introduction to books of the Bible will be more valuable to you than anything you can get from someone else. Now, I've said I am thankful for commentaries. I thank God for all those commentaries he's given me. And one of my favorite actually is Warren Wearsby. He is very good. He is very good. But I have different ones as well, and they are good. But to attempt to write your own introduction to books of the Bible is always more valuable to you. Because that's something between God and you. Amen? You take time to pray. You take time to ask God for guidance in this, give you understanding on all these questions so you can answer. It's totally different when you do it yourself. It's very valuable to you. And at the same time, once you're done, the accomplishments are God's. Amen? We never say, look, I did this. No. God did this. God gave me the knowledge to do this. But the accomplishments are his. So if we can do that, if we can be humble, and I love 
the writings of uh, Warren Wiersbe, when all of that, when I study that, I can see he's a humble man and God has used him greatly. But the accomplishments he gives to God. So if we can do that as believers, that's what God wants. That's where he wants us. And the more we submit, the more understanding he will give to us. So yes, Sometimes the answer to these questions that we just looked at are not available. Sometimes they're not. But by attempting to answer them, the Bible student gains a better understanding of the book. Believe me. By only attempting to answer them, even though we can't answer all of these questions, but by attempting them, we have a lot better understanding of that book that we just studied. Amen? A lot better. And that's the beauty of studying. Sometimes these questions can be answered by consulting other parts of Scripture. That's where comparing Scripture with Scripture comes in. Amen? We don't have the question. We can't find the answers there. But then all of a sudden, after even sometimes after you have studied this book, you read in a different part of the Bible, I was studying on that, and I couldn't find that answer. Here it is. God reveals the answer to the question you couldn't find back there. Amen? <clears throat> That's why the Word of God is such a blessed book. You know, some like I said, in other parts of Scripture, for example, to obtain the background of Paul's epistles, one must oftentimes go back to the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the first time we hear about Saul. Amen? Where Paul, where Saul was persecuting the church. And we talked about that quite often here. But where God saved his soul and Paul gave his life too. Christ. And you know, he submitted everything. And that is a prayer of mine. If I, if God could teach me to be submissive the way Paul was, so I could be used, and the way Paul was used, I don't think anybody around today could be. We probably could. But for me, I just, but if we could in a way be used in that way, what a blessing. And yes, my prayer is, I want to be submissive as Paul was submissive. Is your prayer that as well? We should be. We should submit the way Paul submitted. You know, you can tell when people love the Lord. There are some people... It's not hard not to go to church. Other people, not to go to church is very difficult. Brother Barry, when he has to stay home because uh, he's going to have a, an operation or something, he doesn't like to stay home. He likes to be here. Amen? He likes to be with God's people. He likes to have fellowship with God's people. And he likes to praise the Lord here in person. I see that. And I know there's a lot of others as well. And today anymore, well, we can praise the Lord in different ways. Now we're online. My wife said the other day, now, hey, you're even famous. You're on YouTube. Wow. I never would have thought I'd be on TV, tell you the truth. But technology today allows it. So people, lots of times, prefer to look, uh, see, at, uh, watch at home and come to church. And it's a blessing if you're sick, you're allowed to do that. But I still believe if we're not sick, it's better to be in church. Amen? And I hope everybody online says amen to, as well. It's good to be here. So we've looked at two things now. Get a thorough grasp of the entire message of the book. That's what the first step. 
Second, make an introduction to the book that you're going to study. And I don't want to make it long today, so we'll look at the third step next week. Amen? we look at the third step next week. I still have a couple of more steps here. But I will say what it is, and then we'll look through it. The third step is to outline the book. Outline the book. And we'll look at that next week.